Howdy folks, little John uh, popping up corn beer. Now, this is part of the uh, brew ventures that have been get tossed about a little bit lately. Uh, this one, I did do a, um, I started to do a video on brew day uh, and ended up wiping it off the camera because I didn't get to finish it on the day. Uh, I discussed this in the video from Friday with the uh, the breakfast ale. Uh, so, um, for the sake of getting this on record and putting the information out there, I thought I'd just uh, do a quick vid while I'm bottling, just to get some details out on it. So, that's it, yes, corn beer. Now, uh, a few people have commented when I've mentioned corn beer, oh, they've gone uh, Corona. Yeah, Mexican cerveza. Um, not quite. Uh, now, it is well uh, documented that Corona has a whack of corn in it, but it's a long way short of actually being yeah, a corn beer. It's not just made with corn. Um, or with high numbers. Um, I can't actually locate, I haven't been able to find any real clear numbers, but any information that is out there uh, on ingredients says that it's barley, corn, hops and yeast. Um, now, under most conventions, that means that barley is the largest ingredient. Um, so, given it's only barley, so it's at least at least fifty one percent barley, um, and probably a bit less than probably well less corn than fifty percent. So, this varies in the fact that this beer has actually been made with it's sixty uh, percent. 60% flake, well, I didn't actually use flake, well, I used polenta, uh, did a polenta mash. Um, basically, just boiled up a heap of polenta, um, stacked that into the uh, into the robo brew, and then mashed into that uh, the barley. Now, I did put Alpha MLAs in with the polenta before that to break it down uh, and to convert the sugars that were in there just to make sure there's enough enzymes to get it fully converted. Uh, I wasn't sure that the barley was going to be enough on its own, and that was the barley was actually um, marisota. Um, no, it wasn't. I've got Marisota on the sheet, but it wasn't, wasn't Maris. It was, um, it was Violin Filsner. So, uh, so that's where the grain bill is. Um, just mash normal from that point. Uh, original gravity was 1046. Uh, fermented this with just USO5 at, um, like 16 degrees, top of my head. Let me just check the numbers. Uh, da, 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 high five. Actually, that's a lie. It was actually at, at the ambient here in the garage. Uh, that's right, it was too in the ambient, so it was around 18 degrees. Uh, then went in the fridge just for a quick jump up to about 20. Um, finish off at 20 just to make sure it was done, then I cold crashed it over a few days. And we finished up with a final gravity for around 10.15, um, which has surprised me it's, it's so high. Uh, and again, I don't know whether that's contributed from the corn or the enzymes that are in there or whatnot, but I really thought I would have got 
um, lower than that because that's actually quite a low attenuation for the A5. But um, the reality is it's only about 67%, but that's where it's sitting, so that's where it'd be. Um, it's hard to tell there. So the reason it's fairly light in colour. And it smells every bit like you expect it to. And it tastes like you expect it to. Very, very light. Uh, a little bit of corn sweetness. And just enough hop there just to put a little bit of bitter touch on it. Only really slightly. Um, the hops were uh, made just gallina at 60 minutes and then a little bit of 5 minutes. Uh, I calculated about 19 IBU. Uh, I don't know what the breakdown is, but um, with 0.4 of a gram a litre at 60 and 0.5 of a gram a litre at, um, at 5. But it's very, it's very light. Um, so that's where he is. Pretty simple. Um, I'm just bottling, bottling it up now. Uh, I haven't got a rule on this, I probably um, could have made a bit more. Tasting that, I'm thinking it's going to be quite nice for summer, but uh, that's it. I'm not going to go on about this one. I said this is just simply to get this beer on the channel, because um, obviously because it's been discussed um, on, on previous videos, there's a little bit of interest. Um, so, just to put it there. Uh, because there isn't a video, you've got any, any questions, you know, stick them down the bottom, you know, ask away. Um, I'll answer them, no problem at all, um, on the process. Uh, I will link up the, uh, um, an older video which was All Grain Passion Through Cerveza which I did uh, the All Grain version of Kingsley's recipe uh, that actually does show the polenta mash getting added to the mash so, so I, you can have a look a bit of a look at that if you want to see how it sort of looks but it is um, it is a fairly basic um, boil up uh, I will put just a little bit of a write up at the bottom of the video in, in the um, in the blurb just to uh, elaborate a little bit on what the process was. Um, that's it. But if you do have questions, ask away. If you haven't subscribed to Little John, hit the bottom down there in the corner. The bottom. Hit the button in the in the corner. Um, so you get notified when things are happening, such as tasting video for this beer, which will be probably somewhere around um, four weeks from now. Uh, Maybe even five. Give it uh, might take three weeks to carb up here in the garage this time of the year. It's holding pretty good temperatures, but we've been lucky. We haven't really plunged into winter too badly yet. Um, I think when we do that, we'll slow the carbonation down a little bit. So, yeah, four or five weeks from now, we'll be doing tastings, uh, and we'll see how this goes before we stick it away and leave it rest for summer. So, little John for the day. I'm going to continue on get this bottled. So, uh, see, I'll see you again. Brewing beer, drinking beer, talking beer, good brewing.